Hello everybody, uh, we have gotten through the initial modules and now we'll be talking about the specific software ones, starting with Python. Now we have different ways to use Python here at your research computing center, um, but the first of these is the most, is the simplest one, is to use a terminal and just type in Python, right? And this will let you do any Python programming right on, right on there, really simple, right? And we can get on out by saying exit, the two parentheses, and you're out back on your terminal, okay? But we like to use environments. Environments put all your packages together and allow you to have different projects divided, creating isolated environments, right? We have two different ways of doing this, by doing either virtual environments or doing conda environments. Now, we use conda environments. You can use either of them, but we recommend conda because it creates the isolation of the environment uh, much better with the, the packages that you have. So if you have multiple projects, you have projects that have different versions of Python or different versions of packages, conda is the way to do it, okay? So we'll be going through our conda documentation and how to set that up. So let's go ahead and clear this in, okay? Let's talk in this change to the docs. Now, let me take you to Python on the HPC, All right? So here's where we land on here, and we're gonna go into the conda and anaconda docs. And here you have differences between conda and pip. If you've used Python before, you know that pip is what allows you to install packages. In this case, conda is gonna be doing that for us instead of pip, All right? So the first thing you're gonna do is, I'm not gonna do it on mine because I've already done it and I can't repeat the process, but you module load anaconda. This is all done in the terminal. Then you conda init bash, right? This initializes the base environment. And then you read in the configuration. After this has been done, you will see that your prompt looks like mine, saying base as the beginning. This means that anaconda, you have a base conda environment in there. But how do we create new ones so we can separate our projects, right? That is the magic here. Um, we can install packages there. And this is what we use for creating a new one called conda create. So let me go ahead and copy this in so you can see how this looks when we do it all together. Conda create and the name. In this case, I'm going to call ours tutorial. Okay. I'm going to call ahead and call it tutorial. You'll see it. Uh, it takes a, a minute to process and create your new Conda environment. Now, it's important that we remember the names of this because we put in the name of your Conda environment for when you want to do a Jupyter Notebook session on your open on demand so your packages don't change right so you can reuse those packages the same way when you have um your jupyter notebooks and we will see how the jupyter notebooks runs in a moment once we're done with this okay um now the there we go so here we have it it's going to tell you where it's installing it please remember the path gpfs general your home your user that's your home directory then it's going to go into conda environments tutorial Okay, and you will go click yes on that. And then it tells you how to activate it. So let's go ahead and activate our Conda environment. Conda activate tutorial. And you will see that the front change. Now it's not the base environment, now it's the tutorial environment. And how do I add in packages? Okay, so let's do a little package, Conda install XML. I could do NumPy, big packages, right? But it just takes a while to initialize everything. So I'm gonna go Conda install XML. It's gonna collect everything. And it's gonna try to find my package. Right? If it can't find it, we'll try a different uh we'll try a different package there. There we go. So in this case, it couldn't find the package XML. So let's go ahead with a more common one. Let's go ahead with NumPy on there. Got it. Kind of install NumPy. This one should be done um, easier. That means that the package is XML is only a pip package at the moment, or it would be in PyPy. There are ways to pass a pip only package into Conda, but for most common packages, that's okay. I just wanted to use a small one in case a NumPy took a little bit too much. But I'm gonna wait here so you can see how it how it loads up, right? So it's it's resolving and it's gonna tell you that to update it, do not do that, right? Leave it, let it run. Okay, and you're gonna see how. You're going to see how Conda runs in a moment. But while it does that, let's go to Jupyter Notebooks, okay? So we have here, this is what on the open on demand dashboard. Remember, od.rcc.fsu.edu. Um, and you here change the name of your environment to whatever environment you created, right? And then you create launch. 
And once you have that, then it creates your virtual environment based on that. But I want to wait until this starts in. Okay, so here we go. These are all the packages you're going to build in. The first time around, you're going to see that it installs Python and it installs pip. It also installs NumPy, which is the package I asked for. But the first time, it will put in a Python. And there's a default Python, in this case, Python 3.12.1. Right, so if you need a different version of Python, you can specify that in Conda. Okay, if not, we're going to go ahead and say yes. And we'll start the installation process. And as you know, this is going to take quite a while. Okay, <laughs> but now let's go on to this. I'm going to use a different name just so you can see how this loads up, which is one of my personal um, virtual environments just because it takes a while while it installs and until the Python installation is done. Fortunately, the um, Jupyter Notebook is, is going to give us some trouble. Okay, so I'm going to have a and queue my own uh, Jupyter Notebook there and we're going to wait a minute while it starts running. I'm going to try to uh, I had an RStudio one running there. Um, but yeah, and that is how you create your Conda virtual environment. Now you can create that for each project you have. Give it the name of your projects. Give your package install for each one, specific packages for each one. You can even specify the package version, same as you would do with a pip install equals package number, right? Um, and that way you can just keep everything in its place. Keep the, the package files in their place, okay? And make sure that you're working with what you need and nothing more. And that is the magic of Conda. Um, if you want to use different things than Conda and use virtual environments, that's fine. You can. And we had a documentation on our on our FSU RCC docs. So you can figure that out if you want to do virtual environments. But we recommend everybody to do Conda. Okay. Now we're just waiting here to while, while it starts up. No worries. I'm I'm using the general access queue. If you remember a conversation about Slurm queues, just so you can see what the usual weight is gonna be uh, for a Jupyter notebook job on yours. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna connect in uh, and you'll see it'll pop up. So it'll give you your home directory in the files, right? And you're admitted there. You get all your home directory in the files, and this works the same as any other. You can go ahead and ask for your notebook. And here I'm going to open a Python notebook, and I'm not going to give you a full tutorial on Jupyter Notebooks. That would take as longer time than it should. Um, but you, so you see how it, how it comes up for the um, for the Jupyter Notebooks for the RCC, right? So there it is. So you get uh, a normal cell, and if you want another one. Uh, and change to markdown, you can, right? And write markdown as well. Okay, so that is all for this one. We covered Jupyter Notebooks and we covered um, how to make your own content environment. And I hope the rest of the Python tutorials help you out on making your own projects a reality. See you later.